Many of us associate reindeer and turtle doves with the holiday season, but how did this come to be? As we discussed in our Animals of Halloween episode, many fauna connections to the season started long, long before the religious traditions. So let's take a look at which animals have taken part in the New Year celebrations since the beginning, and how they've helped shape the holiday icons of today. Before the birth of Jesus, before Christmas was even a word, the end of the year was a time of celebration for the simple fact that it signaled the changing of day length. Prior to the invention of electricity, these dark, cold nights meant long periods of little food and an overhanging sense of death. While Halloween, or Samhain, was the holiday that signaled the beginning of the difficult times, Yule, or whatever name it had throughout the regions, signaled a transition out of it. The shortest days of the year occur towards the end of December. After that, they start to grow longer, bringing about more light and eventually spring. The holiday season is the turning point of what is essentially the most difficult part of the year in the Northern Hemisphere, especially for humans without electricity. At the beginning, these holiday celebrations included the burning of large logs, called Yule Logs, and people believed that each spark from these special logs signified the birth of a calf or pig for next year's herd. So, as we saw in the Samhain celebrations, domestic livestock are truly the original animals of the holiday season. In fact, they had further presence in different parts of the world, where some people used this time to reduce their herd size to more manageable numbers. For some folks, this was the only time they had the opportunity to eat fresh meat. Livestock have continued from their roots as important figures in the animal arc of the holiday season, even into modern times. Donkeys and camels both feature heavily in nativity scenes as the beasts who bore the three wise men on their journey to visit newborn Jesus. Another example of modern-day livestock as a representative of the end-of-the-year holidays is the Yule Goat. Although the practice of making goat figures from straw and bound with red string goes back hundreds of years, these symbolic animals are still made today. Their origin may be linked to the worship of Thor, the Norse god, who rode a chariot pulled by goats. It may also be linked to harvest gods, who took the form of goats. Even today, the Yule Goat can be seen in images with Santa, a man closely associated with other holiday animals. Today, Santa Claus is nothing without his trusty reindeer who pull his sleigh, but the Jolly Man's legends didn't begin with the ungulates. These animals are rather recent in the holiday iconography. Santa's story began hundreds of years before reindeer were first mentioned in a poem written in the 1920s, so Saint Nick came long before his reindeer. It's worth mentioning, of course, that natives of the Arctic have been herding reindeer for millennia, and they have their own ways to celebrate the start of the new year, including a tug of war using a rope made of seal skin. Many birds also feature in the end of the year holiday animal pantheon. This is most often referenced in the 12 Days of Christmas Carol, in which a multitude of birds feature. Some suggest these are allegories for Christian icons. However, this has largely been refuted and disproved. In fact, the five gold rings is likely a reference to another bird entirely, the ring-necked pheasant. All of these foul gifts combined would have meant a pretty bountiful feast for the recipient, and this concept may be more in line with the original idea of the poem. Much like the New Year's cows were culled for feasting, a bundle of birds during the longest nights of the year are surely a welcome gift. Some other birds commonly seen around the holiday season are robins and cardinals. Their red plumage really stands out in an otherwise grayscale landscape, at least where it gets cold enough. In the case of the robin, specifically the European robin, the association with Christmas came about when people started equating the birds with the red-dressed delivery people, known as robins around the 1840s. The delivery robins showed up on Christmas cards but were eventually replaced with the birds, and the birds still appear on Christmas cards to this day. Cardinals don't have quite the same origin story, however these resident birds, meaning they're birds who don't migrate south for the winter, tend to be easy to spot around the end of the year. It helps that they come in one of the main colors of the season, bright red. Polar bears and penguins often feature in year-end celebrations. These two likely come around due to their association with cold weather, but it's not entirely uncommon to see them together in artistic depictions. While the two may seem to go hand in hand, or paw and flipper. These animals would never naturally come in contact with one another. Polar bears live in the northern Arctic, and penguins almost exclusively exist in the southern hemisphere. They literally live on opposite sides of the earth. 
maybe their coming together is meant to be a representation of how many folks come together to celebrate this time of the year. There are other animals you may have never considered to associate with the holiday season, but plenty of people from different parts of the world do. In southern parts of Africa, the pine emperor moth helps to reduce pine populations in native coastal ecosystems. Their caterpillars are also known as Christmas caterpillars because of their bright colors that look like twinkling Christmas lights. Spiders are another arthropod that brings joy around this time of year. In parts of Ukraine, Germany, and Poland, a spider web in a Christmas tree is believed to bring good luck, and some trees are even adorned with spider-shaped ornaments. Perhaps our favorite holiday animal, however, is the Yule cat. Viewers of this show should know how deep our love for felines goes, and this applies even to the supernatural. The Yule cat is taller than a house, and prowls around on Christmas Eve to eat the children who haven't earned clothing under the tree by completing their chores. If kids don't finish all their tasks before the holiday, they don't get new clothes, and there's nothing the Yule cat hates more than old clothing. This is just a brief overview of all the animals that feature around the holidays. While some are well known throughout many parts of the world, such as reindeer and cardinals, there are all sorts of ways fauna appear in our holiday celebrations. How many of these did you know? Do you have any animals come to mind when you think of the end of the year? Let us know in the comments. We hope everyone has a wonderful holiday season, and thank you for watching Animal Fact Files.